How did the trip come about? We were in the pub and we, I don't know, just came up in conversation really. We suddenly came up with a bright idea that we were going to drive to Mongolia. None of us backed down, did we? None of us called chickens. So. Yeah. Mm. Do you know anything about Mongolia? Yeah, I, I used to, read a lot of those books on Genghis Khan. So no, I know nothing about Mongolia. <laughs> it's not just a massive drive to the other side of the world. It's also going to be about a year of planning and preparation just to get to the start line. I'm, I'm scared. I'm, yeah. We're looking into different ones, although we're quite set on the idea of going down by the Caspian Sea. But definitely we want to go through Kazakhstan and Mongolia. Uh, what about... Beijing, Chong, Chongqing. Shenzhen is like down here somewhere. I mean, it's 10,000 miles across, no roads. None. <laughs> we wanted a very recognisable logo, something that people could easily associate with. The whole point is that we're going to give give our car to the charity, isn't it? That's the idea behind it. They get a new car for an ambulance or whatever, and then we get this adventure. So it's almost a community vehicle that if there's bad weather and people can't get food or someone needs to go to the hospital or clinic, or something, then there's that vehicle which can help the community. Yeah, we're quite scared of, of camping, being outside. Oh, we all need to be able to navigate because we're not taking any GPS, we're just going to be using maps and compass. So we got in touch with some ex-Royal Marines to teach us some basic survival skills. The guys that are coming down over the weekend, uh, it's going to be all ex-Marines or ex-military guys, um, and they're going to be teaching the first aid, all the survival skills and that, so it should be really good. It's natural to have a bit of fear, it's natural to have a little bit of stress, and that's a good thing because it's going to keep you going and keep you striving for more too much and you're just going to go like a sack of spuds. I, I didn't think we would actually be able to build a shelter that good. Yeah. <laughs> you alright James? It's Mike, first aid, huh? He's moved to look at me. Snap. You know, there's no point having a bland culture and going, it's your fault, you got us last or whatever. Just accept you're in a situation and then you can start to plan and you can start to move on. We're looking at Land Rover Defenders, Toyota Hiluxes, or Nissan Navaras. I think we can start off by saying we have these massive, grandiose sort of ideas, you know, oh, we're gonna take two brand new Hiluxes. Is it good? Yep. That's not bad. That's really not bad. Right, so we can work with that. It'd be pretty special, wouldn't it? But then one day, we decided to Lower our aim slightly. Yeah. New plan is going from an L200. We're going to keep the length, increase the height, lower it, and we're going to get one of these. It's got a 75 brake horsepower engine. In. Comes in red. 1300 quid. It's got the 2.4 litre engine in it instead of the 1.9. 75,000 miles. It's good in the way that we won't get done for speeding. We won't get done for speeding. Uh, we have got vehicle approval from Go Help, and now we're on our way up north to go and buy our vehicle. So it's very exciting. Yeah, we didn't get up there till about half seven. Came around the corner, and it was just love at first sight. And it just looks so um, benign, actually. It did not look like it could get to Mongolia. Drop the cog. Handles like a dream. I think we both knew yeah. it was coming home with us. That, that, was, that was the one, wasn't it? We're going to miss the van. Good luck and uh, send us a text from Mongolia. On the outside, it looked a bit battered and sort of, you know, a few little rust patches, but mechanically, it was absolutely sound, mm. wasn't it? Cue the music. Number one, some guy. Doing all right? We've uh, got this bit on. We just made it look even more ridiculous. Than <laughs> 
What about the roof rack? Yeah, roof rack. That was a must-have addition. I know, it's not going to fit, I don't think. I'll, I'll back up. It's not going to fit. That was millimetres. In the jerry cans on the back? Yeah. And mounting those on the doors. Gutted the back. Yeah. Put in the wooden shelving and then these plastic boxes. Panda, the spray painter. He sort of looks at it and he goes, oh no, you know, I'll be able to do this. And oh, we didn't really stop him, did we? Because we were just, let's see what happens. Are we going to make it? No. Flat out, no. I've got faith in you boys that you're not going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, unfortunately, we've we've realised we've got an oil leak or some some sort of leak. Basically, we were on the start line and we were the only team with the bonnet up. Is it fixed? No, no, we we're just showing people our engine. Next stop, Dover. <laughs> So we are now in Germany, we have been through France, Belgium, Holland and Germany today. It's been a long day, but a really good day. By day three we had reached Poland, but the van was pulling alarmingly to the right. We decided to find some help and stumbled upon the best garage in the world. I'm gonna say this is probably the best garage I've ever been to in my life. It's amazing. This, this... It was bad news. Is there any way to fix it? I don't know from where to take the parts from this car. After only two days our steering had broken, we were stuck with no LDV dealers outside of England. Oh, hi there. Um, I've got an LDV pilot um, and we need a new track rod. Well, we need two new track rod. Um, but unfortunately we're, we're actually stuck in the middle of Poland at the moment. If we speak to Bartak at Tazuma, he's got excellent English. Is Bartak there? Did you find the, the LDB track rod arm? Uh, LBU 6746. We've been in that building for a few hours now and um, we've just been on the phone ringing around people trying to translate listing part numbers. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. But then, success. We've now got to go to Krakow, which is southern Poland now. Down there, to this guy who apparently has them, fit them, and get moving. Slight delay, lots of lots of anxious moments, but I think we're sorted now. After a long drive through the night, LDV heaven. The guy inside's been laughing at our van. He thinks we're crazy. He's making this sort of movement when we go to Mongolia. I don't know whether that's we should fly or do something else. Um, he's now on the phone again, and I think phones are good for progress. He's doing something. After leaving our sports van with a random Polish mechanic, we decided to see what the local sites had to offer. Um, we're in Dinoland. No, no, D D Dinolandia or something like that. All right. Polish for Dinoland. And there's mini golf. There's. Pterodactyls. But why are we in here is the, is the question. Ah, the van is being fixed, so we have five hours to kill. And for the princely sum of two pounds each, we thought we'd come here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. The van was back on the road and flying. But it wasn't long before we encountered yet another problem. A conflict in Ukraine is escalating this morning. Government troops launched operations against pro-Russian forces. Russian president Vladimir Putin is warning that Ukraine is on the brink of civil war. Unfortunately, there's a bit of an incident in Ukraine at the moment, so we're having to go around 
up north and through Belarus to avoid Ukraine. We are soon in Russia and decided to treat ourselves to a night in a hotel. This is, this is Russia for you. The room comes with uh, shot glasses. But that's about all it came with. So this is our third bottle of water for tonight. It's pretty brown, horrible and gunky. What about the language barriers last night? Yeah, we, we, we resort to like a little book and drawings and the fish last night. The fish drawing was one of my favourite. I mean, the one last night literally just shouted at us. We're going to try and make Volgograd today, which will be really good because then we'll have only been three days in Russia, so we'll be fully caught up. We're still in Russia, quite near to the Kazakhstan border. We were in the village room. North of Volograd was lush, fertile, green fields and forests, and then desert. It was hot today. We stopped for lunch, had a swim in the Volga, which was lovely. This is this is the adventure from here on in. In the morning, we realised that we'd set up camp on a rubbish tip. After agreeing it was all James's fault, we headed into Kazakhstan. We are in Kazakhstan! Yet fish! It skips across the terrain like a little mountain goat. But then... Ali thought he was Colin McRae. Uh, Turns you. out he isn't. So we got out, tried to push it, not happening. We then started setting up the winch, but a very friendly lorry driver came by. We set up a tow with him using George's kitchenware tow rope. Thank you. And he just pulled it out. Was this a sign of things to come? James, what are you cooking here? Rice and meat and mushrooms. It's going to be lovely. Hold on. We've got a larder coming towards us. We uh, we showed them the car, showed them where we're from. They loved it and they said goodbye and they're off. I think I think the lesson learned here, Kazakhstanis are very... Inquisitive. Inquis yeah, inquisitive. Great word. next day got off to a bad start. We're going down the main road and we saw a supermarket on the right. James and I went in and then when we came back out there were some Kazakhstani youths surrounding the van. They had their arms in the, in the van and they were sort of aggressively asking for cigarettes. Don't have any. So Paddy started the engine. One of them reached in, gave me a little, little slap on the cheek. And then, as we were driving away, they started throwing rocks at us. Oh, sh go, go, go. One of them missed the window by about that much. <laughs> but yeah, that, that made me distrust Kazakhstanis for at least an hour. It's nice and cool in the morning, so we'll get off early doors and eat up the remaining, what, 50k? Early tomorrow, without the engine overheating. <laughs> Think of Uzbekistan. Yeah. yeah, just like Kazakhstan, really, except hotter, rougher roads. Wow, <laughs> that is dusty. Have you seen this side yet? <laughs> it was so hot, even the roads were melting. We soon realised we had more immediate problems. Uzbekistan had no diesel. Russia, 
the jagged road surface was taking its toll. The roof rack was causing us problems. We were getting a lot of uneven tyre wear. We were starting to wonder that it was all just too much for the LDV. The desert soon turned into mountain passes. It was truly bandit country. After eight days without a wash, we were in desperate need of water. We were exhausted, and with the van overheating, we just needed a nice quiet road to the Kurdistan border. In these cities, you've got you've got like a, a two-lane road either side. But the Uzbekistan has managed to cram maybe about ten abreast of these little Daewoo super carriers. Weaving in and out. Manic. Manic. After an exhausting day, we collapsed by some secluded cotton fields. So yeah, we basically pulled up on this tarmac track and these two women came up. Um, obviously, translation issues. Then more people came and came. Eventually, there's about 10 of them, the whole family came. And uh, they said, you know, we can't stay here before there was. And they ended up leading us into their back garden. So, I mean, this is it. We're in their, we're in their back garden. The whole village had turned out to welcome us with a slap up feast prepared in our honour. Mammoth Step had lapped it. Very still, tranquil. So we were quite tired from the night before where we'd, we'd been up late. So we camped by this lovely lake and all of a sudden this guy wanders up and sits down. <laughs> then the guitar came out. It got to about 10 o'clock at night and, and we hadn't eaten by this point and we ended up just saying, right, fine, we'll come back with you. So we're, we're in this guy's house, we have no idea what's going on and he's a bit weird. At first light, we fled the scene without making any eye contact. So we're in, in Kurdistan and it, it, was, it was lovely. The roads were amazing, amazing lakes. It was, just, it was just a really, really stunning country. exuberance came at a hefty cost. We were running out of grip. There is a baby's bottom. We pulled off the road and followed a long track towards what looked like good camping ground. With tempest frame, we were forced to pull out our secret weapon. As long as it doesn't rain, now we're good. Bit of a storm coming. You alright, James? Yeah, but I'm now coming. I'm hard like that.
In the morning, the storm had passed and we woke in a stunning setting. It was then time to prove that we weren't just one trick ponies. Oh, slight change of uh, transportation. Didn't know how to control my horse. It also galloped off like it was going to kill me. Once back on stable ground, it was time for Kazakhstan, part deux. Now we're off to semi. Apparently we have about 350k of really bad roads. Got three days in the desert. Three days in the desert. Let's do it. All the locals are just unbelievably helpful. We had the map out on the bonnet. This guy came over and told us about all the different road conditions. His wife then came over and they started talking to us about our route. Tonight we are having sprats with sweet corn, with a tomato garlicky sauce with rice. I've got my sous chef from the rice, rice master. <laughs> After a stunning evening, it was time to see what the rest of Kazakhstan had to offer. <laughs> My Civic's tied up somewhere near the stone fire I hope you got wheels to joy ride She hopped into Yeah, we're, we're in a really nice secluded sort of gulch Yeah, about five, six hundred metres off the road James is doing some chicken and some vegetables We've got a few peevers Life is good We were then joined by some slightly more unusual dinner guests James having his dinner <laughs> How should he eat my dinner? Surrounded by cows <laughs> and horses and goats and sheep. We made a swift exit and set ourselves an endurance challenge for the day. Kazakhstan. Yeah, we've got a beautiful sunset. James has cooked us up some lovely, lovely dinner. Earlier we had a bit of a problem with the front left shot which actually dislodged itself. At the moment the front of the van is just bouncing up and down like an old wagon. So we're going to look and try and get a new shot. Kazakhstan is massive. Like we've we've travelled for what six days through it and just basically cut corners off it. We've been through desert, we've been through mountains, and now we're in this like really nice sort of fertile kind of plains where they obviously grow lots of crops. I think it'll get a bit more mountainous as we head into Russia. In the morning, we decided to remove our cumbersome roof box in preparation for the challenging terrain ahead. Hey. We've done it again. We've found an absolute corker of a camping spot. Quite a few bugs, but it's cool. Found a lovely area here, sun setting, got a fire going. Got a uh, stew coming on, we've got a load of chopped veg to chop in. We've got a kilo of some meat. It's red, so we're thinking either lamb, beef, or horse, or goat. Maybe goat. Could be goat. Uh, so, yeah, it's going well. The next day, we stumbled across what looked like a garage. He, he just sort of beckoned to us and, yeah, Paddy and I got in his car. He's going to take us to a shop to buy a shock absorber. It must have been, what, an hour into Barnum. And this is a Russian driving as well. Going down the street, he's literally volume right up. 
we managed to find an equivalent size shock absorber off the Fiat, I think it was, wasn't it? Stunning, absolutely my favourite place so far, views wise, it's absolutely gorgeous. Greetings from Mongolia. It's about minus five um, without wind chill. They've lost internet connection, so they can't process our vehicle, which means we're going to have to sleep at the border, um, and it is actually snowing. We've been at the border now for about 17 hours. The car's still not through the border. I kind of understand now what they're on about in Mongolia. It's it's different. It's different to everywhere else, but it's so quiet. That's the best thing. We're the only people here. So we're up at 5 a.m. It's bloody freezing, and the sun should be popping up over the mountains over there in about 20 minutes, otherwise we're going to look like Muppets. Yeah, we, we're facing completely the wrong way. Sunrise. We were now fully committed to our route with no escape plan. Ahead lay the infamous Gobi Desert. So today we came across a river, had to cross it. Set off trying to get a bit of speed up so we could just keep the car bouncing along through the reeds and um, yeah, we got stuck. The exhaust was underwater, so Pat had to keep the revs going. So we got the winch out. Eventually we got out, but it was a bit of a miracle. About 20 kilometers down the road, we were faced with another river, exactly the same situation, if not deeper. So we tried to just uh, put some stones in to help balance the van out. Ali was in the driving seat and just put his foot down. The front axle hit a rock. Yeah. And it definitely stopped the whole car. But fortunately, the rear wheels were able to bite and get us over it. Wow. So good, I'm so happy. The LDV pilot lives on for another day. Uh, let me introduce you to the Mongolian highway. Get up close and personal. You can see these waves in the road. You can actually see some of these ruts about 10 centimetres high. It's different for each wheel, so it just shakes the van to pieces. Before long, we had sustained some serious damage. Slight change to the front of the van. Yeah, I'm annoyed. I, I thought they'd survive. And the fact that they've both fallen off as well is really interesting. Really sad dog. But the thing, the thing to sort of put in context in Mongolia is that there is just nothing there. The whole time we were going across Mongolia, we were on compass bearings. 
just been slowly plodding on. Teams work brilliantly. We, we get up, you and I, you do the first shift, yeah. we'd stop for breakfast, yeah. I'd do the next shift, we'd stop for lunch. After four brutal days at a painstakingly slow pace, we were spat out by the Gobi Desert. We were only a matter of days from the finish line, so we decided to soak up some local culture. Here we are in a Mongolian monastery. We're being very cultural and we're having a look around. Despite the cultural significance of the monastery, the van proved to be of more interest to the locals. <laughs> <laughs> Having found tarmac at last, we made our way towards the final camping spot of the trip. So what are we doing today? Driving into UB, as the locals call it. Um, I'm gonna drop the vehicle off. A bit, a bit sad. Final air freshener is going up. I mean, it's literally just there, up a tarmac road. Cheers. Cheers. The van has behaved like the ultimate underdog. People have laughed at it from its inception all the way here. I mean, we're laughing at it now, but my God, what a machine. It has not let us down. I mean, it's embarrassed us <laughs> on several high profile occasions, not to mention the start line. Um, the best point obviously has to be the van. We've put it through hell. To start the front, very clearly we've got two spot lamps. They fell off on a Mongolian dirt track. Also got a bit of trim missing here. Not quite sure when that happened. Inside here, as you can tell, it's very dusty. Um, this is mainly from the issue of the doors and windows not fitting properly. In here, you can see more of the dust. Tents are just covered with it. These metal joints have actually bent and broken the uh, rim they're sitting in. And we have the issue of the roof rack keeps sliding over that way. Been through four tires because of this camber issue. We did have a roof box on the top, but due to aerodynamic reasons, that had to go in Kazakhstan. But brush all that aside, we, we've made it, we're in Mongolia. It's 10,000 miles, three deserts, five mountain ranges. We've only got stuck, we've got stuck five times, once in the river. It was quite literally so out of its depth. It pulled through, it was amazing. I, I had some doubts along the way, we've had some breakdowns. The low point had to be in Poland where we were sat in the Aveco garage, where there was a real thought that we wouldn't be able to carry on at that point. I don't know from where to take the parts for this car. Thank you. 